General Motors introduced one of the industry's most sweeping and historic changes when for the 1977 model year, it downsized its entire full-size lineup. Dubbed Project 77 internally, the goal of the 1977 launched full-size cars was to keep the interior dimensions about the same, if not larger, while trimming the overall exterior dimensions of the vehicle and cutting weight. The program was a huge success overall across all divisions that adopted the downsizing, including Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac. Over at Pontiac Division, the 1977 Bonneville was significantly downsized as part of the program, shrinking by about a foot from its 226-inch overall length in 1976 and a weight of about 4,400 pounds, down to a curb weight of around 3,600 pounds, and an overall length of about 216 inches. Styling was also heavily revised in the vein of the 1977 Chevrolet Caprice with what GM called the sheer look. In other words, the cars were relatively simple in form. They lost a lot of that tumble home or curvature from the side of the body in toward the roof that the 71 to 76 models had and had very sharp creases across the car to complement the simple forms, giving the cars overall a very clean appearance. The design and packaging were a home run for General Motors, and in the case of the Bonneville, sales doubled in 1977 to over 120,000 units from around 60,000 units in 1976. Within the 1977 Pontiac brochure, Pontiac Division made a big deal about this 1977 vehicle as well, saying that now for 1977, Pontiac is making history once again, with the most dramatically redesigned full-size Pontiacs ever. Just turn the next few pages and you'll see it's the most exciting news since Wide Track. While much of the 1977 Pontiac brochure details the exterior styling of the Bonneville and also talks about the new features in the now downsized Bonneville Brome, there is one key element of the Bonneville Brome for 1977 that was introduced that is pretty gosh darn cool. And that is the introduction of Bonneville's striped velour interior, which it called Valencia. And this Valencia interior in particular was one of the most over the top interiors that General Motors did during this time. There certainly were a number of interiors that offered poofy and cushy seats, like those included on the 1974 to 76 Fleetwood Talisman, and also the super poofy interior of the 1975 to 1976 Electra Park Avenue. And that Electra Park Avenue poofy interior continued on into the 1977 downsized Buicks, but this almost zebra-striped Valencia interior was really not in keeping with General Motors' interior themes during the time. It just being so over the top in terms of the colors and the seat stitching patterns used. Moreover, it wasn't just the seats that were cloaked with this zebra-striped fabric. General Motors also included that fabric on the door panels for the Bonneville Brome in 1977. It must have proven somewhat popular with customers because by the time 1978 rolled around, the Pontiac brochure declares that this interior was now available on the base Bonneville and not just the Bonneville Brome. So to summarize, for 1977, the Valencia interior was optional in the Bonneville Brome. The standard interior was kind of these plain Jane seats in that vehicle. But by the time 1978 rolled around, Pontiac had made the standard interior in the Bonneville Brome this loose cushion style that was so popular amongst other divisions and very similar to what was in the Fleetwood Talisman as well as the Buick Electra a few years prior. The Valencia interior then became optional on the base Bonneville. And after the 1978 model year, this Valencia interior was sunset never to be seen again in General Motors history. It's unclear how many Bonnevilles were equipped with the Valencia interior in the 1977 to 78 model years, but it does seem a fair number of vehicles had it. And if somebody wants an over-the-top interior 
from this period. It's certainly one that rises to the top in terms of General Motors over the top interiors, and it was indeed a Pontiac exclusive. And while the interior was exclusive and quite over the top, particularly for Pontiac, what's interesting is that it was outfitted in what was otherwise a pretty standard plain Jane-ish interior that was rather unremarkable. More specifically, the instrument cluster in these 1977 Pontiacs is really kind of a throwback to previous years with very square-faced gauges outlined by picture frame chrome bezels and an inverted U-shaped dashboard theme that borrowed a bit from, one could say, the 1970 Lincoln Continental even. You judge for yourself with this photo of a 1970 Continental interior here. The other thing Pontiac kind of copied was the series of warning lights that was atop the gauge cluster in a separate pod, but that was very similar to what Cadillac had introduced in 1974, putting all their warning lights in a particular level of the instrument cluster above the speedometer and generally right in view of the driver. So aside from the interior fabric choice that was cloaking the door panels and seats, there really wasn't too much novel on the inside of the Pontiac interior in either the Bonneville or Bonneville Brome in the 1977 and 78 model years. Apparently that lack of innovation didn't deter buyers of the 1977 Bonneville as they bought it in almost double the quantity as the previous model in part because the car, while being tidier overall in the exterior, did truly have more front headroom and rear legroom than the previous year's Bonneville. The only unfortunate part about the downsizing was that it also meant downsizing of engines and powertrains under hood. And in the 1977 model year, the standard engine in the Bonneville became Pontiac's 5-liter 301 cubic inch V8, which was all new for that model year. There's also no longer a tall deck version of Pontiac's V8 available like the 400 and 455s. And the largest available engine was the Oldsmobile 403 cubic inch V8. Buick's 350 cubic inch V8 could also be had under hood. So clearly General Motors was not only downsizing their engine choices, but also starting to consolidate their powertrain lineups so they didn't have each division making similarly sized engines. This was something that a lot of customers had a tough time digesting. And in fact, in many of the brochures of this era, General Motors started printing that its cars were equipped with engines manufactured by other divisions so that they were transparent to customers because there had been some incidences where customers were in uproar, particularly with Oldsmobile, at Chevrolet V8s being installed in Oldsmobiles during a time period in which there were some capacity constraints. All in all, though, the 1977 Bonneville, 78 Bonneville, and indeed these full-size Bonnevilles that lasted all the way until Pontiac temporarily removed the full-size car from their lineup and rebadged their G-body as the Bonneville, are really nice cars to drive, handsome to look at, good to own, and reliable. They're quiet on the inside, they drive extremely nicely. They handle well. The only thing that they're really lacking in is the horsepower department because of the lack of the relatively large V8s. Although I will say the Olds 403 Underhood isn't a bad power plant from a power standpoint. It does have some challenges with its weak lower end and Siamese cylinders from a cooling perspective. Let's now close out with a pair of commercials from 1977. The first specifically for the 1977 Bonneville. And you can see it's a pretty conservative ad for Pontiac clientele, but it is what it is nonetheless. The second commercial talks about GM's design philosophy behind the downsized 1977 full-size cars, including those from Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac. Let's start with the 1977 Bonneville ad. If you're looking for luxury in a full-size car this year, First, look at the luxury available in Pontiac's new Bonneville. Feel the luxury in Bonneville's exciting new size. Then test drive it and experience Bonneville's new hush of luxury. For this year, isn't it beautiful? Luxury comes first at Pontiac. Pontiac. 
And here's the final commercial talking about the 1977 downsized GM full-size lineup across all divisions for General Motors. Announcing General Motors full-size cars for 1977, designed and engineered for a changing world. When GM began designing its new full-size cars, it had a goal to use the world's foremost automotive technology and build from the ground up a line of totally new automobiles that would help conserve our natural resources. These cars were refined by computer to help make them strong and secure, yet without using excess steel. To help make them last, they received extensive new corrosion-resisting treatments. And to help reduce drag, they were tested and tuned in the wind tunnel. Yet, with all this concern for conservation, GM still retained the comfort and feeling of spaciousness people look for in full-size cars. The new full-size Chevrolets, Pontiacs, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, and Cadillacs. Designed and engineered for a changing world. Well, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.